Welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management, a weekly conversation with area leaders about how to persevere during uncertain times. Now here's your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new year and welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. Our guest today is Ken Rogers, who's state representative, represents our district and many areas to actually to the northwest part of Hayes. But when challenges come to the state, it takes leaders to go there and make things happen. The next three months of the legislative session is coming up. And Ken, uh, appreciate you taking the time to join us on Forward Ever. Well, Gary, it's always a pleasure and appreciate uh, uh, talking uh, with you. And uh, hopefully we learn something from each other. Well, you know what? There's a lot of things that, you know, life's a learning curve. If you don't learn something every day, you're probably not doing your job. But you're heading into the session in Topeka, and this program talks about challenging times. Obviously, there's a there's a lot of challenges out there, not only on the national level, but the local level. Is there one challenge as you go to Topeka that is bigger than the others? Oh, boy, that's a that could be a loaded question. I think it depends on what context you put it in. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is in, in a role of a state legislator, uh, most of the time we try to should try to stay out of the way. Uh, I think sometimes for lack of uh, whatever reason, we like to control things we can control and sometimes we can't. And so, um, you know, with, with everything going on from an international national standpoint that does spill uh, into Kansas, um, you know, we're very cognizant, I think, of, of dealing with the economy right now, Gary, and and what can we do to make good investments or uh, to look at a way to bring some relief back to Kansas families. And so I think that's one thing even in this off session from the time we adjourned in May till now. Um, I'm trying to think. I looked at my numbers. I'm, I'm finishing up my kind of year in paperwork. I put over 13,000 miles in my car after the session was over. And so that, and again, my district goes from Norton Phillips, Rooks, Graham, and rural Ellis counties. And, and of course, meetings elsewhere, but still, that was legislative work. And so uh, trying to talk to Kansans, talking to others, trying to find some solutions as we go back in the session and what is good for uh, the state. You know, one thing that has uh, is, is come up and you see so much today in the news is immigration. Is that going to be something that spills over into Kansas? Obviously, it spills over just from people coming through and, and into the state through that. Is that an issue that you're going to try to face in Topeka or is that something that's more of a discussion point for later? Well, I, I I know there are some that that would want to do something that is really a federal issue, but we do have, uh, you know, things that I think we can do to uh, be very cognizant that some of our bigger uh, uh, municipalities don't become sanctuary cities or whatever uh, you want to, to uh, use that as either to uh, possibly bring harm or other. You mean, and, and I get that we all want to be humanitarians to a point, but, you know, and we see that in some areas already. But what can the state kind of legislatively do? Uh, it, that that probably isn't one of my strongest things to look at, but I'm I'm sure it, it's been discussed in the past. Uh, it will be discussed further. One of my concerns is is from uh, something that it's a federal issue is the H two A worker program for agriculture workers. You know, and and, and and agriculture workers are those even in, in our area that can come and help farmers uh, get the, put the crop in or get it out and, and, and different than maybe what we think when we think of farm workers, we think they're all in California, you know, picking the vegetables, but, but we have some of those from, from other places that, that come in here and work. And uh, it, that all kind of gets muddled into uh, the whole immigration debate rather than to split them out and say, okay, uh, a skilled worker in this or that, you know, it, 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 it broadens. And so that's been some of the frustrating parts to be able to fix what many believe. And I believe that the immigration system is broken. One of the things that I know that we're a couple states away uh, from actually having to deal with it day in, day out. So having that on the agenda, probably good to talk about closer to home. The governor has been touring statewide promoting Medicaid expansion. Is that something the lawmakers are going to try to tackle this session? 
Well, I think I know there's a lot of people in Hayes. The Hayes City Council came out with a resolution supporting the expansion of Medicaid. The governor's been all over the place uh, in many different uh, places and, 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 and working with uh, business owners to try to put pressure on us as legislators. Uh, in my eight years in the legislature, we've had a couple votes on it. Um, but I... I, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think uh, uh, upper leadership, uh, you know, just will not have it come to a vote. I think um, there'll be some discussion. And I think they'll be very wary, which is kind of the, the part of that is there's other health things that need to be done, but that can be uh, kind of tagged on to maybe other bills. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure, but I, I unless there's some sort of a deal made. But again, both sides have said uh, kind of pre-session, Gary, that, uh, you know, the governor, some things that maybe the the leadership wants, she won't agree to and vice versa, even though I know that uh, the latest proposal has a work requirement. But we know that many states that put that in, that was rejected by the federal government. So um, I would guess there may be some discussion, but I – I don't see it happening now. I, I know it would have a big impact on Hayes Medical Center, and I do get that. Uh, it would have uh, some impact to help a little bit in some of our critical access hospitals that I primarily represent. But there's 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 a lot of other things to it. I think, you know, one of the things, Gary, that we look at, we'll see what's going on to our neighbor to the east in Missouri. A lot of things that go on, and I've said that in the legislature, we look to what happens in Missouri because so much of our population, if you were to draw kind of a, a semicircle to go to Atchison, to Topeka, down to about Fort Scott, a big chunk of the Kansas population is there, does a lot of commerce in Missouri. And so what Missouri does somewhat spills over to what we do because of the influence of Johnson County legislators. Now, I know that some of those taxes that were in play to help pay for the Medicaid expansion in Missouri are coming up for renewal. There's a big discussion going on in their legislature as far as will those be renewed and then what happens if they don't, how does that get paid for? So I think there's a lot of people looking to what happens in Missouri and also Nebraska who did pass it through referendum as it gets implemented, what happens? So that sounds like a po politician's answer and it is because I, I just, I don't know. Well, one of the things I, I do see is there's not a there's not an ongoing effort on both sides to make it happen. It may happen, but it's going to take some uh, compromise in between. Right. You did bring up taxes. That's always on the minds of our voters. Um, and we just saw the state, the state sales tax on groceries drop a couple percent this week. That was a kind of a planned uh, process to eliminate tax on food. But uh, what, ab what about that? I know there's people in shock looking at some of their property taxes. When you take a look at all the taxes in general, what are you going to be looking at in the state side from the legislative standpoint about taxes and how to really protect Kansans? Well, you're right on. I think uh, let's start a couple different ones. One, let's look at our budget surplus. We have in excess of $3 billion of a budget surplus. Uh, due to the federal government's infusion of cash during COVID, uh, good economic times, some of the uh, other things we put into play with collecting some of the sales tax from online purchases. So now, even though last month we were a little bit below projections, still uh, had had a good uh, good situation in any sort of a recession is not been in full play yet in Kansas. So with that being said, so now you have this pool of money. We tried last year to do a couple of different things. It just, I think it once again fell in the weight of too many different pieces in a tax package. I I would love to be able to work on tax packages or tax proposals before the last few days of the legislature. Um, so we'll see what happens there. That being said, there's been a big effort by many county commissions and the, the, the association to uh, implement the LAVTR the ad valorem tax back to the counties. It was, it, 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 it's, of course, it's, it's in, um, in law, in statute, but the legislature has not, re, you know, played that back to the counties for several, several years. And so there's been discussion by leadership in both the House and Senate, Republican leadership, that is, that uh, wants to reduce the 20 mills 
that goes and part of that that would go to, for for schools to be absorbed and then that that would go back directly to property tax owners in in a form of relief and not necessarily go through the county the county makes that it would just go directly from the state i think that's going to be one that has a, a proposal there i know there'll be a proposal yet again to cap uh, uh appraisal rates at no more than four percent on paper that sounds really good but in reality there's devils in the details i believe i think Absolutely. And, and and I'm the same one. We haven't done anything to our house. The valuation keeps going up and uh, you go, OK, man, that's a that's a huge chunk to pay. But I think most people, Gary, understand that there is a role for taxes because to, for roads, bridges, protection, police, fire, so on and so forth. Then you have all these other things. And then that's a whole other discussion amongst itself. But I, but I think what you'll do there is you'll find something along the line to do what the state can do for property tax uh, reduction. But people will also need to realize, and as we talk in town halls, we can do all this, but what services don't you want then? And you know, it, you know, everything goes up. You know, a paperclip isn't what it used to be, or things on the dollar menu are a dollar 20 well you add that up times how many i mean those those monies add up so i say that i also think there's going to be another run at a at a single rate income tax i think you're going to see a proposal to where and it talked about last year and didn't get very far but i think there's going to be a, a bigger effort to get rid of uh of income tax on our retirees and we do some for military, but 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 all those, and try to to make Kansas a tax friendly state for those. And again, you can't do everything in one fell swoop. And we also have to be very cautious so we don't repeat some of the errors of what happened last time when we did a massive tax reduction and the economy did not grow. And so we're all very cognizant of that. Now, some of us were in the legislature when that happened. Many of us weren't. But uh, again, books have been written on it. We've had a lot of uh, former legislators and others that tell us, be careful as you as you do this. this. All these things sound great on paper, but we you know we need to make sure that we do the 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 accurate math, the true math, and like good Kansans, we you know we need to make sure that we have a little extra rather than you know uh, it, it's hard to budget, it's hard to um, give relief on the hope. We have to have it uh, very factual as far as I'm concerned. Our guest today is State Representative Ken Rogers. And Ken, you mentioned 13,000 miles since the end of the legislative session till the end of the year. I want to find out what you learned as you were traveling around, but we're going to take a break first. Our guest today is State Representative Ken Rogers, back with more on Forward Ever after this. Challenging times are when experience matters. We allow our clients to live with confidence long-term trusted relationships, worth wealth management, enhancing lives, and strengthening families. Welcome back to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. We're talking about leading the state. Our state representative, Ken Rogers, is with us today. And Ken, you know, you mentioned 13,000 miles in that car. A lot of that time in the car, you're going from plate point A to point B to point C, et cetera. But when you're at those points, those different places, the different community, different count town hall meetings, what are the key things you're hearing from Kansas that you want to put in your briefcase and take to Topeka? Well, I think, you know, obviously taxes is probably the most as, as people, uh, you know, write that check and do that. Um, the way things are taxed, we've got an issue with the side-by-side -side vehicles. And there's been several of us that have worked on it. It comes down to a constitutional amendment maybe needs to be done to get those uh, properly because the way they're, uh, they're, um, uh, you know, shows up as, as what they are as far as what kind of a vehicle. And that's to me is, is causing uh, great pain in personal property taxes. Water is another huge issue. A lot of folks, of course, I'm chairman of the Ag Committee, so I talk with a lot of agriculture groups. And uh, many, and I am very pleased that we did get uh, a long-term funding for uh, the state water plan. 
And and I saw in the paper now the governor's come out and she says that's one of her priorities moving forward. I think that is very good news. Look forward to working with her and our water chair, Jim Minix from uh, Scott City on how do we move forward from what we did last year? Last year was more of a let's get some funding and, and we can do some things. That was the big goal last year and some other reporting for some of the groundwater management districts and uh, and now on to other things as far as some conservation measures and 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 to really work with all water users a lot of times we focus just on irrigators and saying they're the problem well they're not a lot of them have reduced already what they're what they're using for to grow crops and uh, but we need to make it economically viable, but also keep all those things in mind. So, um, you know, I think there's 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 a number of issues that deal with the federal that come back and say, well, you know, as a state, there's not many things that we can do about that. But I think the other thing is, is people just want to know that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're good stewards of their money. And a lot of times when we talk taxes and we talk about, you know, this time of the year, now we're thinking about the federal tax returns and and the state kind of gets, uh, eh, you know, it, 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 it does, it's not as much. So they don't think about it, but they also want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and not utilizing it on frivolous stuff. And really in Kansas, we, we can't. We just don't have that that option. But the one thing that that has been discussed a little bit is uh, is special ed funding in our in our K through 12 schools. And, you know, uh, we as a legislator work with the governor uh, and uh, are fully funding constitutionally our K through 12 education. And so uh, special ed is the next thing. We also we have a partner in the federal government who needs to do their job as well. And so I think that's that's going to be an issue uh, that we're going to uh, to be working on uh, also. But um, you know the other thing, Gary, is is uh, people talk about you know hindrances for them to do business. We have a lot of regulations, rules and regulations, and I know uh, that's one of the things we're going to be working on in the session is, I think, a constitutional amendment uh, that we have to do. It's unfortunate, but to come back and uh, and so the legislature has control of these things. We pass laws, and then it goes on to the rules and regulations, uh, uh, unelected bureaucrats that uh, come in and, and think they know what the legislature's intent was, and – then we've got to go through that whole process again. And, uh, you know, in all these things, safety and security are important, but to hinder somebody's ability to be a business, a viable business in Kansas, uh, that that's that, that to me is a real problem. Again, I'm going to ask one quick question because sometimes it's not the big issues that you get to hear about. It's the little one. There's one bill that's out there right now that's going to talk about uh, not letting schools in Kansas begin their year prior to Labor Day. Most districts around here do mid-August. <laughs> Those are some of the things that can pop up that like, wow, you get a lot of thoughts. Any feedback on that? Well, I, I have. I had uh, some constituents come up to me and say, hey, thanks for what you did to get school started after Labor Day. And I said, well, that's 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 a group's idea. And much like we always have a group that puts in the, to get rid of uh, daylight saving time. So, um I don't, you know, I am probably one that that uh, would agree with the way we do right now, and I think it should be up to the individual schools of when they choose what's best. Um, you know, yes, uh, our area even has changed where we don't have as many uh, farmers and farm kids that you know need to dig things to taken care of. Um, so, uh, but you have. This changes a lot of things. You know, you want to be like some of these colleges on, on the coast where they have two or three football and volleyball games before school even starts. Well, okay, that's – so I I don't see it going anywhere. I see it having some discussion, uh, but but I don't uh, – I don't uh, – I don't think it's going to go – it's going to go very far, but unless it gets thrown into some other package of, of a bunch of other things. Well, I got to talk about the farm. How are things out on your farm, Ken? Boy, after Christmas, we had about five inches of snow up here in Phillips County, and uh, still, Gary, our roads were kind of sloppy, but nobody complained. And so we are 
We are going into the wintertime here, please. Uh, we don't know what the next few days are going to bring. We hear there may be some more moisture, but uh, uh, not calving yet. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'll take some sloppy roads for some good moisture. I know our wheat looks pretty good, and I've talked to a lot of other people all over the state of Kansas. They're pretty pleased with the way this wheat looks, but we know it's a long time between now and harvest. Ken, thanks for joining us here. Somebody out there listening wants to – Get, wants to give you some feedback, wants to give you some thoughts on, on some of the things we discussed today. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Boy, you can Google me, just Ken Rogers, R-A-H-J-E-S. I'm all over the place. You can call my cell phone or text me, 785-302-8416. Website, Ken for Kansas. Uh, you know, all those different things will get to me. And uh, I believe me, uh, I have no problem. I'll take text message. I'm on social media. You can reach out there as well. I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm open and, and hopefully as transparent as possible. And, and anybody can call. And, uh, and we look forward to seeing folks uh, here in during the session, working with the chamber and other folks at the, uh, at those Saturday morning coffees, I believe the first Saturday of the month, uh, uh, well, we'll start up here pretty quick. And uh, and so we look forward to that. Well, Ken, Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us on our call today and appreciate all the work you do. Let's visit again uh, once the session is over and we'll see if we got anything done this year. Well, let's hope. Thank you, Gary. Hey, Ken Rogers, state representative for us here in outside rural Ellis County and other counties around northwest Kansas, but one of our leaders in the state house and uh, appreciate him being a part of our program today. You've been listening to Forward Ever, leading in challenging times. I'm Gary Shorman. Thanks for joining us for Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management. Join us right here next week for another episode with host Gary Shorman. Until then, remember to move forward ever, backward never. It's now on our watch. America's been tested before, many times. We salute those that are on the front line, in our own backyard, and well beyond and those that lead us to a better tomorrow. Our roots run deep, and so do our relationships. Let's move forward together. Live with confidence, worth wealth management. There is a tomorrow that shines upon a better day. We'll move forward together.